This is a Sutotal production. Hello surveyors, uh, this is going to act as our first practice video for chapter 4. Um, and so here it, we're given very precise bonds and um, we just need to determine, are these bonds, are they polar, are they nonpolar, or are they ionic? And so the way we're going to have to gauge that is that we're going to need to use the electronegativity. So the best way to gauge the electronegativity is using our handy dandy periodic table here. And so just remember, electronegativity increases from bottom to top, right? So electronegativity increases that way, but it also increases from left to right. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that things on this side of the table tend to be the most electronegative. Things are, are this corner, right, in particular. Ignore the noble gases, but stuff right in here tends to be the most electronegative, while stuff over here tends to be the least electronegative. All right? So, what are we looking at here? Here we have, it's got a potassium and a carbon with a bond. So, this is a metal and this is a non-metal. So what does this tell us? Well, anytime we see a metal and a non-metal, it's pretty much a given that it's an ionic bond. All right, now why is that? Why is it that metals and non-metals give us ionic bonds? Well, because most of your metals are over here and most of your non-metals are over here, right? So the farther apart these, these elements tend to be from each other on the periodic table, the the larger their difference in electronegativity so this stuff's more electronegative so in this case carbon is more electronegative than potassium right it's higher up it's further to the right this one's lower down it's further to the left so there's a huge difference in electronegativity here so we would expect this to be an ionic bond right why because of a large electronegativity difference between these two all right, and so if you don't believe me, you can go back to the slides. You can look at that table that gives all the values. You don't have to memorize those, but you can look and you can actually do the subtraction. And what you'll see is that the when you subtract those two numbers, you get a value greater than two. That's ionic when the electronegativity difference is greater than two. All right, here we have a carbon and an oxygen. Now, if we look at their placement on the periodic table, they're both non-metals. Okay, so that in and of itself, right, you have two non-metals. So that in and of itself gets rid of the fact that it could be ionic. So it's either polar or non-polar. And um, what you're going to see here is these two, 90% of the time when you have two non-metals bound together and um, they're different, right? So carbon is different than oxygen. They are going to be polar. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things that we know is that this oxygen is more electronegative than the carbon, right? Because it's further to the right, right? So oxygen is further right than carbon. So this oxygen actually has a partial negative charge. This carbon has a partial positive charge, right? <clears throat> now, if you go and find the values and subtract them, you'll see that their electronegativity difference is large enough to make this a polar bond, not a nonpolar bond. All right, nonpolar bonds typically occur only one in one of two instances if the bond is between two of the same element and there's an example coming up of that or this guy right here if you it if if it is a carbon hydrogen bond this is two non-metals right yet again but their electronegativity difference is so small that they are actually non-polar all right, I want you to remember. I want you to remember this, okay? If it's two of the same atom, of course it's nonpolar. But when it's two different ones, it tends to be polar. Unless our one exception here, carbon-hydrogen. You see a carbon-hydrogen bond, that's nonpolar also. All right. Next up, we have an NH bond. All right. So yet again, two nonmetals. All right. But here, the electronegativity difference is is strong enough that this would be considered a polar bond. Right. So nitrogen. So pretty much anything 
here over, so nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, those are going to give us polar bonds with hydrogen. Okay. Um, next up, we have Br2, Br2. It is two nonmetals, but they're both bromine. You, so, even because it's two of the same element, this is nonpolar, right? Because if you subtract the electronegativity of bromine minus the electronegativity of bromine, what do you get? Zero. Goose egg. Big ol' goose egg. So, that's going to be nonpolar. Now, here we have um, a sodium and an oxygen. Well, we've got a metal. And then here, we've got a nonmetal. What happens when a metal and a nonmetal come together? They make a baby. No. When they come together, they got compound that forms is ionic okay now if you look on the periodic table oxygen sodium they're almost on exact opposite ends of the periodic table of course there's a huge difference in electronegativity between them all right uh, next we have carbon nitrogen now this is a triple bond and I didn't highlight this earlier that's a double bond but it'd be the same thing if you had C single O right that would be polar as well and the same thing here you have carbon nitrogen triple bond but even if even if it were say a carbon nitrogen double bond or a carbon nitrogen single bond it you're still just comparing the electronegativity difference between them and so this is two nonmetals yet again and they are right next to each other but this is still a polar bond. Okay, remember, the only time you have two nonmetals that are bound to each other and it's nonpolar, two different nonmetals, let me put it that way, two different nonmetals bound to each other and it's nonpolar, carbon hydrogen. That's going to be near about your only exception to that rule for you guys. All right? So that this is one to remember. I'm going to go Mufasa on you here. All right? remember not who you are I mean hopefully you remember who you are but remember carbon hydrogen bonds they're nonpolar they're that one little oddity okay next up we have a carbon carbon double bond and it doesn't matter if you had a carbon carbon single bond or a carbon carbon triple bond right it's still two of the same element it don't matter it's nonpolar all right so um, hopefully, uh, this kind of helps you weed through, you know, what's polar, what's nonpolar, right? Polar and nonpolar, you see between two nonmetals, okay? Uh, ionic is when you got a metal and a nonmetal, right? And then you have to kind of remember, how do we tell the difference between nonpolar and polar? The easiest way is, it's definitely nonpolar if it's two of the same thing. If it's, now there's one exception to that. If it's two different things, specifically a carbon and a hydrogen, it's also nonpolar. Everything else, every other two not two different nonmetals bound together is polar. Polar. All right, bye.